Hello, and welcome along to this next in this series of videos where I am looking at taking the QDE V2 base image and getting it loaded and configured uh, into my hypervisor. So on my machine, uh, I am, I'm running on a Mac and I have the VMware Fusion uh, hypervisor installed. So if we look at the documentation here and click on the QDE setup instructions, then there are different instructions depending on what hypervisor that you're using. So in terms of what I have, I'm going to take this uh, base VMware VMDK file and I'm going to get that loaded into VMware Fusion. So these are the steps that we need to go through. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at uh, those steps and get them loaded into my running instance of VMware Fusion here. Now, uh, this is the uh, base 7-zip file that you'll get from uh, the sales team when you request uh, the VMDK version of QDE. Now, what I've done is I have pre-extracted that. It takes a little bit of time, so rather than sitting uh, watching me extract that in a video, uh, I've already done that. So that was just on my Mac here. That was just a case of double-clicking on the file. Uh, but in uh, on a Windows machine, it would be a case of right-clicking and extracting. So what I'm going to need to do now is I want to take this VMDK file and get it into to uh, my VMware Fusion. So over here, I'm going to click on the plus sign and I'm going to say uh, new. And up here, I'm going to select create a custom virtual machine and I'm going to click continue. Now, what we want is a Microsoft Windows uh, instance that is as close to Windows Server 2019 as possible. So you may have Windows Server 2019 here in your list. I currently don't. So the neatest one that I have is Windows Server 2016. So I'm going to click that and I'm going to click continue. Now, when it comes to choosing the uh, firmware type, the, uh, the, the options are legacy BIOS or uh, UFI. Now, in terms of com best compatibility, we have made the VMDK use legacy BIOS. So that I'm going to need you to select that here rather than the default of uh, UFI. I'm going to click on uh, continue, and then I'm going to be prompted to say whether I want to create a new virtual disk or whether I'm going to use an existing one. So the point of this uh, base VMDK that you've just downloaded is that you're going to use that as your uh, virtual disk rather than creating a new one. So I'm going to go ahead and click choose virtual disk, and then in the drop down list that pops up here, I'm going to navigate to where I have that VMDK file extracted so for me that is in this v2 folder and this is the vmdk file in question here in terms of whether i want to create a copy or share this virtual disk i'm going to say make a separate copy of the virtual disk copy it to a new location and use that as the base disk rather than using it as a shared base disk between different uh, machines so that's why i've left that as the default i'm going to click choose and then i'm going to click uh, continue and then in here, coming up to, to the finish, I'm going to say that I want to customize settings because there's a couple of things that I want to do uh, in addition to uh, the base VMDK file. I want to make a couple of quick suggestions. So I'm going to say that this is going to be called QDE uh, V2, and then I'm going to call it Chocolate Server, just so I know which VM is which. Uh, you can call this uh, name whatever you want. I'm going to click Save, and then it's going to... To, it's then going to start the import process. So it's, it's, it's copying that VMDK file into that new location. And once it's done that, it will then be able to uh, spin up that machine ready for us to customize it. Uh, the customizations that we're going to want to do is uh, make sure that we have the uh, recommended amount of uh, CPUs allocated to the machine and also the recommended number of uh, RAM associated. Uh, associated, uh, allocated to the machine. So in terms of what we have here, the recommendation is at least four CPUs and eight gigabytes of RAM. And the other thing we're going to want to look to do is we want to look to bump the size of the hard disk. So uh, in order to make it uh, shippable, we, we set it to a, a, a a, a specific number, but in terms of using QDE in a long running environment, the number of packages that you internalize and number of things that you put onto that machine is going to increase. So we do recommend that you bump the uh, hard drive size uh, up from what it is by default. Now, once that's done, we're going to want to make sure that the actual uh, C drive of the uh, running instance is expanded to uh, take up all of that space. So we'll do that as part of the uh, setup and configuration that we're doing here as well. So we'll just let that copying of the disk finish. And once it does, what we should see is it should pop up with the uh, virtual machine ready to be configured and then an options window ready for me to set those values. Okay, so that's it finished copying. And 
is this is the running instance. Uh, it's not quite running yet, but it is the instance that we're going to uh, run once it's set up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, come into this settings window here, and I'm going to uh, expand this to be uh, four cores, and the recommendation is eight gig of RAM. So let's bump that to eight one nine two, and then the final part is uh, the hard drive size. So the default here is essentially 100 gigabytes so what i'm going to i'm going to bump this uh to 150 now that's not recommended uh in terms of uh what we recommend in a long running uh qde instance but it's what i'm going to use for the purposes of my machine here uh because i've got lots of machines running on uh this machine so I'm, i don't want to uh, take up too much space uh so it's going to uh, expand that hard drive the virtual disk and then once we have that we will do a couple more things to f and that will finalize the process of setting up this vmdk ready for our setup of qde so the one additional thing that we haven't spoken about yet is that once this vm is running we're also going to want to install the uh vmware tools specifically for this vm so that just gives us a little bit of a better uh, usage of uh, general mouse clicks, uh, interaction with the desktop, etc., uh, with those uh, VMware tools installed. So let's get this machine up and running now. And once it's running, we will get those things set up. So here, Windows is this is just going through the normal uh, Windows boot cycle. Uh, hopefully, this won't take too long. And once it's up and running, the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to log in as the uh, default user and immediately change the password. So we ship this uh, QDE image with a uh, base password. Now that base password will come from uh, your uh, sales contact. That's not something I'm going to put into this video. Uh, you will need to, have, that information will have come from the sales folks when you, uh, when you, got the QDE base image. And you're immediately going to want to change that to be something other. So that's the machine booted. So I'm just going to go virtual machine here and say send control alt delete. And then I'm going to type in the password here. And then again, I mentioned that it's going to immediately change. So I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to change this to something that I will remember. And that is me changed. And then from there, I should be able to log into the machine. So I mentioned that one of the first things I want to do is to get up and running with the uh, VMware tools. So in, in VMware Fusion, I've just clicked the option menu here and I'm going to say install uh, VMware tools and I'm going to say install. That will essentially load a CD-ROM drive into uh, or what is or was a CD-ROM uh, into my machine and it should allow me to uh, click on that machine, click on that uh, mounted ISO and then run the contents of it. So I'm going to say this PC and then in here we should have the VMware tools uh, disk loaded into the uh, D drive here. So I just double clicked on that and I'll let that run through. Now one of the options that you'll get is uh, what level of installation you want to do. Now I tend to do a complete installation. So I'm going to go next, and then I'm going to say complete. I'm going to next, and I'm going to install. Now this will require a reboot of the machine, and uh, we, we're going to want to let that happen. Like I say, the 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 default mouse movement and clicking on things. It's until you get these VMware tools installed, it it can be uh, a little bit problematic. So that's what why I install it as the the first thing that I get up and running here, and then. We'll take a, another look. So actually, we changed the uh, the base drive to be 150 gigabytes, and it looks like the image has already taken or assumed or consumed that extra space as well. So there's nothing that we need to do there, uh, but there are instructions on how you can expand the drive if you need to, uh, if it hasn't been picked up automatically by your hypervisor. So with that done, I'm going to let that reboot and then we'll have a quick look at the documentation to see if there's anything else that we need to do. Uh, and if there's not, uh, we'll call that done and then we'll move on to the next video where we will uh, start to look at how we can configure 
uh, QDE for our setup. So I'm going to let that reboot. Back over here to the documentation, uh, edit settings, boot the VM, uh, install VMware tools using the console menus. This will require a reboot. So I'm going to say that that is done. So let's make sure that that reboots successfully. And I will point out where we're going to go to next, which is to really make use of the there's a readme.html file on the desktop of this machine. And that contains the information that we need to walk through next. So again, I'm just going to send control alt delete to here and I'm going to run this. Make sure that we're up and running. There we go. And as a sanity check, let's make sure that we've got 150 gigabytes there. And if we come up to here and look at system, we should find that we have got eight gigabytes of RAM, which we did, and we've got four logical processors, which is what we set up as well. So this machine is uh, good to go. So this readme.html file here, I'm gonna double click on this, and I'm gonna say that I'm gonna default it to uh, Google Chrome, which is installed on this machine. These are the uh, set of steps that we're gonna run through in the, the following videos. So hopefully you'll join me for those as well. Thank you very much.